Hi, it's Wednesday, July 9th. 10th. <laughs> Start that over. Uh, it is Wednesday. One, two, three. Hi, it's Wednesday, July 10th, and this is Baltimore Weekly, your guide to all of the cool things happening in Baltimore's innovation, tech, and entrepreneurial scenes. I'm Andrew Hazlett. I'm Sharon Paley. And today we're coming to you live from the Digital Harbor Foundation's Tech Center in Federal Hill. And we're also joined by a distinguished guest, Andrew McCoy, Executive Director of the Digital Harbor Foundation. But before we get into the meat of this very interesting discussion we're going to have, we want to thank two of our shareholders who make all of our work possible at GBTC. And some of the work at DHF possible. Yes, there's a curious overlap, but no conflict of interest, mind you. Uh, we are just naturally fans of one another. Um, but we want to single out a couple of them that are connected. Advertising.com, AOL's uh, office here in Baltimore that does amazing uh, technical infrastructure for AOL's global ad network. and. They, uh, they are also major supporters of Baltimore's tech community and of GBTC, so thank you for your support. And also to BTS Software Solutions, uh, which is a um, software company doing large infrastructure projects for the U.S. government. And in fact, they're just half a block away from where we are now. So thank you very much to BDS, BTS and Advertising.com, and thanks to DHS for having us today. Yeah, and also I just want to say thanks for both of those those groups that, that it, they're really supporters of the whole economy here, uh, and especially seeing kids growing up to become the technologists of tomorrow. So is that the, is that the goal of DHF? Why don't you yeah. tell us about? Yeah, so the, the mission and the goal of Digital Harbor Foundation is, is to prepare students for the innovation economy of tomorrow. We want them to find their way into pathways and careers using technology. Um, and, and everything that we do here is focused on that. Whether it's web development, app development, uh, 3D printing and digital fabrication, uh, or any number of different, different topics, cybersecurity, uh, we want to see kids taking part in that economy. So this is for after school programs and Summer camp, how does that work? Uh, we focus on the out of school time because we have so much more flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, schools you know, are starting to see and try to adopt some of these things, but in the out of school time, kids have lots of time and they are interested. And, and I mean, you look at anybody that has ever run a company or gone into a STEM profession, it's 99% it's of the time something they did outside of school that kind of sparked their interest, ignited their, their passion, and, and gave them the skill set to go on and do that. So we are that space for the tech uh, kids. Yeah, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, talk on air with a, with three of the you know whip smart uh, kids doing stuff here this summer, um, and we heard lots of wonderful things that will will go great on your website and brochures. Um, but uh, it, like the excitement and joy of learning was was pretty tangible, and um, the idea that uh, there's so much here to learn that you know, many adults haven't even heard of 3D printing yet, even though it's have a, a lot of people in the tech community, it's, it's old news, but these kids are, are learning these skills for jobs that don't exist yet, but will exist very shortly. Is, yeah. is that well, right? And I mean, especially with the 3D printing, you see some mm -hmm. of our students, uh, like Darius, for example, who's actually built a 3D printer from a kit, uh, and really understanding the ins and outs of of 3D printing, limitations, the opportunities, uh, the possibilities, and and the identity that comes along with somebody who has made something, and that's really what the the maker movement is about. Is is instead of being a consumer of of content or a consumer of different things, you know, wanting to to make objects. I mean, physically creating something that that doesn't exist currently uh, empowers you to say technology is not a black box. Uh, that I have no control over. It's not a TV that just is a one-way street. It's it's something that I can create, dream up, and and invent the next thing. 
Well, yeah. there's that famous book program or be programmed, mm -hmm. and uh, the, these kids are learning to be on the programming end. Yep. Um, how soon can um, the tech companies that are so thirsty for talent hire these particular children? Uh, <laughs> legally. Is, yeah, legally. Legally. Hire them without violating child protect labor laws. Well, we'd, I mean, we'd love to see some internships. We've had some students place in internships uh, and been working with companies. Uh, we've had some that are working on live projects for clients and getting paid to do so. But, but really, you know, we're six months old in terms of the tech center itself. Uh, we have our summer programs this summer, but I would love to see a handful, you know, 10, 15 kids next summer in internships around the city. Um, and especially like with, with AOL, uh, we've been working a lot with Elliot Pearson to kind of design what exactly are the, the skill sets and create badges around some of those and students that over the course of the year earn those badges would then be in a pool for, for applicants to the internships at AOL. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about the program that you're running here this summer, Maker Camp? Yeah, Maker Camp is part of the Maker Education Initiative, which is a national program. There are uh, 34 sites, and this is a, a funded by Make Magazine, by Google for Entrepreneurs, Intel, Cognizant, and Pixar. Uh, and basically, they're looking to say, how can we create a culture around the country of people making things? Uh, and it can be everything from, uh, you know, crafting something on a 3D printer to making it with your hands. Uh, it doesn't, high tech is not the only type of tech. Um, and it's all about DIY and empowerment. Uh, so we're, we're lucky to be one of the sites, and the way we've structured the summer is we have four camps that each focus on a different aspect of technology. The first one was all about circuits, learning things using Arduinos or a modified Arduino called the Makey Makey. Uh, the second one is all about 3D printing uh, and, and digital fabrication, and the second two are a game development programming using Corona SDK in the, in the language Lua, and the final one is Aerial Pursuits, which does things with quadcopters. And Terry Kilby's coming in and spending some time with his wife as well, uh, working with us on that. Making drones? Uh, uh, dr <laughs> drones with one application. <laughs> drones for fun and learning. It, well, I mean, just to that string of things that you just unrolled, uh, was, uh, including things like Arduino, which is sort of a... Uh, Micro computer DIY hardware tool, which is a great learning tool, and um, you know, grown-up hackers are doing interesting things with that. You know, maintaining climate in in um, their offices, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's it's amazing that. All of these things, I don't understand all of those things, but by the end of the summer, all of these kids will understand those things. Yeah, and and really, this two weeks is an introduction and an exploration. Uh, and one of the most important things that we can do for students is help them self-identify, uh, you know, with technology, feel empowered, and know what they do and do not like. Because because if you're if you're not thrilled by 3D printing, that's okay. Uh, better to know that now than after a four-year degree in 3D printing. You know, eventually when that does exist. Uh, and that's the same thing you see all across the board. Is we want to give kids opportunities to experience and explore, uh, so that they find out what they love. And once they find that then they're able to focus and, and you know, drive home that passion and we'll connect them. And that actually brings us to one of the things that we're, we're looking for are the type of people we want to connect them with. Once a student has that, that passion and that, that understanding of themselves, we want to connect them with tech coaches. You know, kind of the equivalent of a football coach, but now in technology. Uh, somebody that can help push them, that can help give them the types of exercises and experiences uh, and the, the vision of what role they can play in that larger economy. Uh, you know, and and us here, like I listed off a bunch of things that are very, very different industries. Uh, we don't have the complete expertise to to be able to dive deep into all of those areas. Um, we're able to give students, you know, an introductory experience, but we rely on the community at large to help when when a student wants to now make a career and a and a life out of that specific, uh, you know, technology. So, are you looking for specific? Um, People from the community come in, and then what kind of role could they play yeah. in the educational process here? So there's two types of volunteers that we really are looking for. One is a mentor, which is kind of like a guidance counselor. Non-technical is great for that. You know, it's somebody that once a month can sit with the student and say, "What is it you're interested in? Uh, let's explore that. What are your plans for exploring that over the next month? You know, what what are you doing?" To yourself online, where's your LinkedIn, what's your portfolio look like, are you blogging about the things you're doing, 
um, you know, so, so that sort of guidance counselor. And the second person is then a tech coach. So in those conversations with the mentor, they say, I really like development. Like, that's, I really enjoy it. I want to do more of it. And then the tech coach now, we're able to pair up with that individual because we know, oh, 15 students want to do web development. Let's find, you know, three tech coaches that can come at different days of the week, you know, one day a week uh, for a, a short period of time, like a six-week window, and, and work with a group of students to help push them forward and, and give them a better understanding. And so those are the two roles, a, a guidance counselor, which we call a mentor, and, and a tech coach, just kind of like a football coach, but for technology. And there's a lot of individual developers out there who um, have expertise in some of these areas, and I'm sure, especially after they're watching and listening here, they will be you know, eager to sign up. And how do they do that? Uh, so you can contact our volunteer coordinator. Uh, currently, Ty Pearson is actually running that. So it's just Ty at digitalharbor.org. Uh, Ty, Ty yeah. at d uh, digitalharbor.org. Um, and you know, otherwise, you know, feel free to hop on our website. Uh, there's our phone numbers there. You can give us a call. Um, the contact forms are there. You know, any hit us up on Twitter, DHF Baltimore, any which way. Uh, you know, get a hold of us, and we'll schedule a time and kind of give you an orientation about, uh, you know, how how to get uh, s started, and then have you come down and begin working with kids. And for, for people who um, don't necessarily have the skills or time, say you're an executive at a company that has some um, uh, charitable donations to make, how, uh, and, and, and I, I know you're, you're seeking some donations or it wouldn't be turned down, uh, how, how can um, uh, those sorts of folks get connected with DHF? Yeah, so right now we are doing a capital campaign because one of the, the limitations that we have is, is just technology. We've had to limit our camp more than we wanted to. Uh, and we have more people that, that are interested uh, because we just need more devices, uh, you know. And and also, you know, we so and we're talking with folks like the Weinberg Foundation about doing a capital campaign. We've had some already uh, commit or contribute, uh, and we're well on our way. But that would be one area that we could really use some help. Um, we also, you know, would love to just talk about individual contributions, whether it's scholarships for our summer programs. Or, you know, for example, Northrop Grumman just funded a, a partially uh, a school year program where it's an evening time intergenerational uh, experience. So you have, you know, a, a parent and child working together side by side to do something with Arduinos uh, or with 3D printing where, you know, you know, the dad or mom may say, I'm really interested in this too. You know, can I, can I come? And, and the kids are like, I really want to, you know, to do stuff, but you, you as a parent myself, I want to do things with my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want it to be like I'm dropping them off or I'm going off and doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to I do something together. And so, you know, building family, building community, and building tech, you know, all, all at once. So that's a project. We've got a partial funding. We'd like to expend, extend that beyond the 12 weeks that we have it lined up for, you know, to be longer. Um, so if somebody's interested in that. But there's any number of ways. And just contacting myself. Uh, you know, Andrew at digitalharbor.org is the best way to, to find out more about specific mm -hmm. initiatives. So how, how young and for all of your program uh, programming, um, and I asked selfishly because my daughter is six and a half, but how young do you go and how old do you go? Yeah, so the summer program uh, was slated seven. Uh, we have taken six and a half, and in fact, we're experimenting to say, can we go even lower? Uh, and up, I mean, 17, 18, you know, it's not a problem. In fact, uh, you know, for this intergenerational piece, it really comes down to are you interested? Uh, and if the parent wants to work with the kid, um, that, that to us is the perfect setup because, you know, we don't have to worry about making sure everything's on the same level uh, if we have the parents that are able to kind of explore and work with the kids. Like it can be anything from a five-year-old to a 20-year-old that's working together with their, their parent and, and having fun. Uh, and all of the projects we do here really are, we teach you the skill set, but what you do uh, is up to your imagination. And, and that imagination's at all levels, uh, you know. Well, I'm inspired. Thanks so much, Andrew. Yeah. We really appreciate you having us here today and yeah. sharing with us. Thank you for coming by. Oh, absolutely. So we're, we're going to uh, let Andrew get back to all of his uh, many, <laughs> many obligations <duties. laughs> running this place. Uh, but. Uh,
Uh, we're going to take a moment uh, now to talk about our um, upcoming events calendar, which is quite crowded and exciting. Um, well, everyone took off for Fourth of July, yeah. and, and I now think it's like yeah. it's back on yeah. in spades this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 back with a vengeance. <laughs> um, one thing that that we're uh, we're excited about at, at GBTC, and you may have. Uh, uh, seen last week's episode where we interviewed Seema Iyer of the um, Baltimore Na Neighborhood Indicators Alliance and tomorrow afternoon is the beginning of Baltimore Data Day or Days um, and there's going to be data. Yeah, data days just so that's clear um, but they're, they're going to be over at the, the Federal Reserve building near Camden Yards for some opening talks as part of this and if you're interested in civic hacking um, social enterprise knowing what's going on in Baltimore real estate politics whatever this is going to be a great event it starts tomorrow afternoon um, and is all day on Friday at the University of Baltimore Thummel Business Center on Mount Royal Avenue and you can go to um, uh, our website go.gb.tc to, to follow the links and get some more information on that and, or, or just Google Baltimore Data Day. Um, we uh, also tomorrow evening is the Tech and Social Change Meetup, uh, which is a very popular uh, uh, event at the intersection of nonprofits and technology. Um, and they're going to be hosting Chris Tuttle, who is an expert on uh, engaging with your online community for nonprofits. So I think a couple of us are going to go to that. Um, Let's see. Oh, one, one thing that's kind of cool, I, I think, is Friday evening at 7 p.m., the Baltimore Underground Science Space, at, uh, which is at 101 North Haven uh, Street, uh, where the, the new ETC is going to be. They um, mess around with biology and genetics and cells and things, um, and they're getting a little worried that they're getting ahead of science and regulation. So they're going to host uh, Dr. Carrie McMahon of the Food and Drug Administration to talk about mm, FDA regulations on food ingredients made from recomb uh, recombinant microorganisms. So that's like science hackers who are also being very responsible. <laughs> Um, uh, going to next week, there's the Baltimore Mobile uh, Meetup, which is happening at advertising.com slash AOL in Locust Point. Um, they're going to be talking about mobile testing, so check that out at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we'll talk about this next week, but there's like 20 really substantive uh, programming meetups happening that night. Yeah. What, next Wednesday is a busy, busy day. Yeah. So, um, and also, I want to say that next week on Friday is BoConf. Yes. And part of it is already sold out, so the Ignite Talks portion is already sold out. But you can still get tickets to the regular um, portion, the unconference portion. So definitely head over to BoConf.com and grab your tickets while they're still available for next Friday's conference. That's for mm -hmm. anyone who's interested in web design, web development. Well. Yeah, that that's that's plenty to keep you busy, right? So, in the meantime, uh, we want to thank Andrew and your uh, brilliant students here, and uh, Ty Pearson, and all of our friends here. It's uh, a confluence of interests here, and we salute you. Uh, we want to thanks thank also to BTS and Advertising.com for. Uh, being shareholders in GBTC, making this podcast and all the work that we do at GBTC possible. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.